That well, that's actually what Ben Bernanke said in his 2010 op-ed when he talked about his defense of QE2 to give the. I think he actually said the the feeling or perception of wealth, and of course he didn't mention what happens when you try and undo that policy that turned out not to be very transitory. Although um, you mentioned real estate coming under pressure, is that? Do you think that's what happens though? That enough things just get destroyed that at least it gets the CPI or the PCE deflator back down to a level they consider that they can at least sell as, all right, prices aren't going up, even if, well, they're, they're staying higher and for a lot of the things we buy. And yeah, I mean, it's a- yeah because inflation is cumulative, right? I mean, the whole system is based upon just constantly growing debt. And when you have debt, you pay interest on the debt, unless of course it's negative interest rate, then that erodes your principal. That that was a big fat test that failed, but I'm very relieved, as I'm sure you are, that the EU is now back to zero. I don't think Japan is at zero yet. All right. Well, it's certainly wild how these things are going. And then in the midst of that, we have gold and silver getting clobbered. We've Shocker. <laughs> a lot of demand for physical metal, yet, as uh, I know you're well aware, there's a lot of contracts selling from hedge funds on the COMEX. Obviously, you're pretty close to the physical market with what you do over there. I'm curious what you've been seeing. Have you had people who are actually selling their gold and silver oh. the physical? No. No. People are not selling into this. If they're smart, they're buying into it. But the premiums are definitely going up. Although Eric knows more about that because I don't really work in that area anymore. But um, the demand is clearly there. But they're trying to discourage you, right? They don't want you to hold physical gold and silver because then you're outside of their ability to control you. The only way they could control you via gold and silver is perception management. Oh, look at this. Gold is down. Silver is down. Ah, why would I want to buy it? Because it's a bigger bargain, right? That's why you want to buy it. Why are the global central banks buying it? And by the way, um, I don't know if you got a chance to see this or not, but the OCC report on derivatives in the uh, FDIC insured banks and they changed the way they had to uh, account for the gold and the precious metals to the gold and silver contracts. Yeah, and it Do you think that's good. true? Yeah. Do, do you think we're really seeing the true picture of, of how they've suppressed the price there? So that is such a stark contrast that, I mean, I don't really know how anybody can look at that and go, oh yeah, no, I don't want to buy metals. No, huh? they're not being manipulated. And they've admitted it. God knows how many times JP Morgan, you know, manipulating the price of gold. And so shocker. Good thing the CFTC couldn't find anything wrong. Yeah, and amazing that you see those <laughs> derivative positions so big, even with JP Morgan, who would seem like there's a little bit of a conflict of interest, um, especially given their history in the gold and silver markets, yet it continues on. And I'm curious, what, what do you say to the folks, though, who I'm sure you hear from them, as do I, that, you know, wonder when gold and silver, if, if it's supposed to be an inflation hedge, and I know a lot of people are disappointed because you have the inflation here and it's sold off. Is it just a matter of when this whole thing runs into further trouble and we see more an acceleration of this chaos. Um, any thoughts on how close we are to that point? Um, yes, I do. I have really strong thoughts on that because what history tells us is when the public loses all confidence and the governments and the central bankers need to regain that confidence that's when they will allow gold and silver, primarily gold, because gold is the primary currency metal, but silver is the secondary currency metal. So they reset the currency that has absolutely no intrinsic value, especially when you're in hyperinflation, and they reset it against gold that's all intrinsic value. 
And so we will see gold and silver expressed toward their fundamental, their true value for all the different ways that they're used uh, when the public has lost confidence, complete confidence in the governments of the central banks. So how close are we? Well, let's just keep watching and yeah, see we, what happens there. We, we might not be that far off from that point where people are losing confidence. Do you see it being an official government reset or is something where just perhaps like the bond markets we're seeing where things just start to get out of control? Or do you think that this is something where we see the Fed reset the, the price again like they did 70, 80 years ago? Uh, I think that ultimately it will, but first of all, we've got to go into hyperinflation because they have to repay all that debt. And there was an article recently where they actually even admitted that this inflation is really quite good because it enables the government to repay the debt with cheaper dollars, except they never repay the debt. They just keep growing more. Um, so I know, I think that they handed over the markets to the traders and particularly on the 10 year treasury back in 2013. And you can see that no longer published a uh, VIX chart uh, on the 10 year treasury, but it was really obvious, you, you, it's just so obvious. Um, and I think that they will, so the markets, and then and here's the thing, Chris, absolutely everything has been turned into a financial product, right? Real estate's been turned into a financial product. It's not a house anymore. Let's flip that house. It's a short-term investment. You know, you've got REITs, you've got all of these products that are made from like actual real things, right? Um, so if everything has become a financial product, easy to trade, they actually want to send that, they, they want to step that up by holding all of our wealth, including, you know, a, a, a coffee mug on tokens that can be traded around the world. Now, I hope it never gets to that point. I really do. Uh, because what they're really doing is for those of us that have managed to, to uh, accrue some level of wealth, they want us to voluntarily spend it. So by tokenizing it and then breaking it down into itty bitty pieces and then short term thinking, oh, I got to have that. I got to have that. I got to have it now. I can't save up for it, you know, and I just got to have it now. Um, yeah, ultimately, that's their goal is to have everything tokenized can be easily traded around the world and you volunteer your wealth because those that are naive and don't understand what's going on, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but they probably will just spend their wealth and not even think about it. Oh, I have, you know, $300,000 in equity in the house and I really like that boat, right? Okay, well, I don't have to take out a loan. I'll just, here are my tokens. Okay, I have that boat, it's on my phone. It's easy to access, it's no big deal, but, then you end up with a population that's in slavery. You know, whoever has the gold and whoever has the silver, not paper, but real, has the wealth. That's why global central banks, although not the US, not, not Canada, I mean, not Bank of England, but those that are in the know, like, I don't know, China, Russia, India, and Kazakhstan, I mean, a lot of smaller countries they're accumulating gold like crazy because they know that whoever holds the gold will have the power on the other side of this mess. I feel bad for most people that are not prepared for this. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. That's what you need to have a reasonable standard of living. And most people will end up in abject poverty. If not dead, there's going to be a lot of depopulation. I'm sorry. It's just always the way.